let's start the Trepota tour number 26 literature tour. Fritz, come on. Come, Fritz. All right, let's follow Yen. Uh, humanities to... zone. And today's destination Western Front. Touch Trepota board. And Open nearby chat. So, first destination flies wide arrival point training camp. So, please click and see you there. All right, see you at Fry's Wide. During World War II, no, we're at World War One. During World War One, the Western Front, which stretched from southern Belgium to northeastern France, France had trenches Imagine and barbed wire on both sides. Imagine reading a poet's letter sent from the trenches of the First World War, or so, seeing uh, Alfred Owen and Robert Graves's scribbles come, on the original here, manuscripts please. of their famous war poems, uh, or looking this is, through the pages uh, of Edward Thomas's uh, war diary. Out of heat All of this and soldiers and is now possible nurse. via the First World oh, War poetry you, digital archive. Uh, the archive brings uh, together where? primary source it's material uniform. from the major poets and, of the Great War. And uh, next, Owen, Isaac Rosenberg. Uh, this Edward is Thomas, World War Graves, Region Vera uh, Britain, and Tour HUD. So Roland click Layton. box. It includes their poetry manuscripts service records, war diaries, and correspondence and sent while they were on active service. And uh, the the uh, open your the inventory and the recent and poets. the object. Many of these were so in a fragile condition a and access to them was restricted. Digital archive teleport to a accessible to all wear. and multiple drafts of so the same you can poems see can be compared HUD side by side. Uh, this makes the resource invaluable right. to scholars as the archive project manager, Kate Lindsay, and, explains. Uh, One of the, the key features of the remark, World Poetry Digital Archive uh, there is that you can bring together dispersed collections of manuscripts. Prayer, Often the poets' manuscripts uh, are, are not in the world archive. They are dispersed archive in archives over the world, across continents, and within archive. different libraries, and within personal but collections. But both are not working, so all today these manuscripts and brought them back together we, in one place. Uh, for example, I, I Robert Owen's anthem for Dane there are seven database. versions of this manuscript and, uh, actually exist. And because Robert Owen was killed in battle, he introduced. the manuscripts can also reveal the conditions under which the First oh, World is, War uh, soldier camp. And so soldiers are training uh, how to dig a trench and uh, wire a fence and uh, uh, etc. If you click green in board, uh, you can st start right to, uh, to the ground, but uh, it takes uh, many times. So I use HUD. A quick uh, to the upper right. Then there are many menus, and click trench start. Then so uh, I guide you uh, until. Uh, hospital. Please follow me.
uh, if you can click right so they give you something uh, tell by the always hit and so a kind of uh, poet so if you you can catch so uh, this is r rat so and first poem uh, does it but uh, uh, by a Siegfried Sassoon Sassoon so I open uh, website does it matter does it matter losing your legs for people will always be kind and you need not show that you mind when the others come in after hunting to gobble their muffins and eggs. Does it matter losing your sight? There's such splendid work for the blind and people will always be kind as you sit in the terrace remembering and turning your face to the light. Do they matter, those dreams from the pit? You can drink and forget and be glad and people won't say that you're mad for they'll know that you fought for your country and no one will worry a bit. Thank you. <coughs> so, so soldiers uh, poem, and next is uh, Nas Vera um, <coughs> retained the the German ward. When the years of strife are over and my recollection fades of the wards wherein I worked the weeks away, I shall still see a vision rising mid the wartime shades, the ward in France where German wounded lay. I shall see the pallid faces and the half-suspicious eyes. I shall hear the bitter groans and labored breath and recall the loud complaining and the weary tedious cries and sights and smells of blood and wounds and death. I shall see the convoy cases blanket covered on the floor and watch the heavy stretcher work begin and the gleam of knives and bottles through the open theater door and the operation patients carried in. I shall see the sister standing with her form of youthful grace and the humor and wisdom of her smile and the tale of three years warfare on her thin, expressive face, the weariness of many a tire-filled while. I shall think of how I worked for her with heart and nerve and mind and marveled at her courage and her skill and how the dying enemy her tenderness would find beneath her scornful energy of will and I learnt that human mercy turns alike to friend or foe when the darkest hour of all is creeping nigh. And those who slew our dearest when their lamps were burning low found help and pity ere they came to die. So the much will be forgotten when the sound of war's alarms and the days of death and strife have passed away. I shall always see the vision of love working amidst arms in the ward wherein the wounded prisoners lay. Thank you. And uh, there is a song with Greek is poster and accept and open. Or uh, there is a Wikipedia, so I opened it. Page. So this is uh, not a poem but a uh, uh, song. So maybe there are uh, song on YouTube. <laughs> I've seen some beautiful flowers grow in life's garden fair. I've spent some wonderful hours lost in their fragrance rare. But I have found an 
the rose that grows in no man's land And it's wonderful to see Though it's great with tears It will live for years In my garden of memory Sorry, eight for time saving. Move to next. Come on, please. Okay, gotta get my so, so I can. There are see. some uh, movies, uh, but uh, I will pass. Please see later. So all uh, movies are not not a poem, but but uh, about uh, World War One. So uh, this movie is uh, about the trench. Oh, please. And here at this uh, front, toxic gas were used. And this poem uh, is about uh, uh, toxic ga gas attack. So I open uh, we'll refer to Owen Dulce et decorum est by Wilfred Owen bent double like old beggars under sacks knock kneed coughing like hags we cursed through sludge till on the haunting flares we turned our backs and towards our distant rest began to trudge men marched asleep Many had lost their boots, but I limped on bloodshod. All went lame, all blind, drunk with fatigue, deaf even to the hoots of tired. Outstripped five nines that dropped behind. Gas, gas, quick boys. An ecstasy of fumbling, fitting the clumsy helmets just in time. But someone still was yelling out and stumbling and floundering like a man on fire or lime, dim. Through the misty pine panes and thick green light, as under a green sea, I saw him drowning. In all my dreams, before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning. If in some smothering dreams you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in and watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face, like a devil's sick of sin if you could hear at every jolt the blood come gargling from the froth corrupted lungs obscene as cancer bitter as the cud of vile incurable sores on innocent tongues my friend you would not tell with such high zest to children ardent for some desperate glory the old lie dulce et decorum est Patria Mori and turn right. Here is the dugout. And on the table, there is a book, a uh, uh, break of day in the trench by Isaac. Isaac. 
Break of day in the trenches. The darkness crumbles away. It is the same old druid time as ever. Only a living thing leaps my hand. A queer, sardonic rat. As I pull the parapet's poppy to stick behind my ear. Droll rat, they would shoot you if they knew your cosmopolitan sympathies. Now you have touched this England English hand. You will do the same to a German. Soon, no doubt. If it be your pleasure to cross the sleeping green between. It seems you inwardly grin as you pass. Strong eyes, fine limbs, haughty athletes, less chanced than you for life. Bonds to the whims of murder, sprawled in the bowels of the earth. The torn fields of France. What do you see in your eyes at the shrieking iron and flame hurled through still heavens? What quaver? What heart aghast? Poppies whose roots are in man's veins drop and are ever dropping. But mine in my ear is safe, just a little white with the dust. Thanks. And the next book is Sketchbook. Sketchbook. Soldiers or rats. Church, maybe. And uh, uh, Isaac, another poem. Okay, loose hunting, nudes, stark and glistening, yelling in lurid glee, grinning faces and raging limbs whirl over the floor, one fire, for a shirt verminously busy, yon soldier tore from his throat with oaths Godhead might shrink at, but not the lice. And soon the shirt was a flare over the candle he'd lit while we lay. Then we all sprang up and stripped to hunt the verminous brood. Soon, like a demon's pantomime, the place was raging. See the silhouettes agape? See the gibbering shadows mixed with the battled arms on the wall? See the gargantuan hooked fingers pluck in supreme flesh to smutch supreme littleness? See the merry limbs in hot highland fling because some wizard vermin charmed from the quiet this revel when our ears were half lulled by the dark music blown from sleep's trumpet. Thanks. And back to... And the Kramurada. Oh, another Isaac poem, Brave of Day in the Trench. The darkness crumbles away. It is the same old druid time as ever. Only a live thing leaps my hand, a queer sardonic rat. As I pull the parapet's poppy to stick behind my ear, droll rat, they would shoot you if they knew the cosmopolitan sympathies. Now you have touched this English hand, you will do the same to a German. Soon, no doubt, if it be your pleasure to cross the sleeping green between. It seems you inwardly grin as you pass strong eyes, fine limbs, haughty athletes, less chanced than you for life. 
bonds to the whims of murder sprawled in the bowels of the earth, the torn fields of France. What do you see in your eyes as at the shrieking iron and flame hurled through still heavens? What quaver, what heart aghast? Poppies whose roots are in man's veins drop and are ever dropping. But mine in my ear is safe, just a little white with the dust. Thank you. And, uh, oh, is that? The setting uh, is amazing here. Uh, la last point. This is a crater, a big crater. And, uh, Will you feel Fred Owen? Anthem for doomed youth. What passing bells for these who die as cattle? Only the monstrous anger of the guns, only the stuttering rifle's rapid rattle can patter out their hasty horizons. No mockeries now for them, no prayers nor bells nor any voice of mourning save the choirs, the shrill, demented choirs of wailing shells and bugles calling for them from sad shires. What candles may be held to speed them all? Not in the hands of boys, but in their eyes shall shine the holy glimmers of goodbyes. The pallor of girls' brows shall be their pall, their flowers the tenderness of patient minds and each slow dusk, a drawing down of blinds. Thank you. And the last poem, uh, also Isaac poem. Dead Man's Dump. The plunging limbers over the shattered track, racketed with their rusty freight, stuck out like many crowns of thorns and the rusty stakes like scepters old to stay the flood of brutish men upon our brother's deer. The wheels lurched over sprawled dead, but pained them not, though their bones crunched, their mouths, their shut mouths made no moan. They lie there huddled, friend and foeman, man born of man and born of woman, and shells go crying over them from night till night and now. Earth has waited for them all the time of their growth, fretting for their decay. Now she has them at last in the strength of their strength, suspended, stopped and held. What fierce imaginings their dark souls lit. Earth, have they gone into you? Somewhere they must have gone and flung on your hard back is their soul's sack, emptied of God, ancestral essences. Who hurled them out? Who hurled? None saw their spirits' shadows shake the grass or stood aside for the half-used life to pass out of those doomed nostrils and the doomed mouth when the swift iron-burning bee drained the wild honey of their youth. What of us? flung on the shrieking pyre, walk, our usual thoughts untouched, our lucky limbs as on ichor fed, immortal seeming ever. Perhaps when the flames beat loud on us, a fear may choke in our veins and the startled blood may stop. The air is loud with death. The dark air spurts with fire. The explosions ceaseless are timelessly now, some minutes past. These dead strode time with vigorous life till the shrapnel called an end, but not to all. In bleeding pangs, some born on stretchers dreamed of home. Dear things, war blotted from their hearts. Maniac earth, howling and flying, your bowel seared by the jagged fire the iron love, the impetuous storm of savage love, dark earth, dark heavens, 
swinging in chemic smoke. What dead are born when you kiss each soundless soul with lightning and thunder from your mind, heart? Which man's self dug and his blind fingers loosed? A man's brains splattered on a stretcher bearer's face. His shook shoulders slipped their load. But when they bent to look again, the drowning soul was sunk too deep for human tenderness. They left this dead with the older dead, stretched at the crossroads, burnt black by strange decay. Their sinister faces lie, the lid over each eye, the grass and colored clay, more motion have than they. Joined to the great sunk silences, here is one not long dead. His dark hearing caught our far wheels and the choked soul stretched weak hands to reach the living word the far wheels said. The blood dazed intelligence beating for light, crying through the suspense of the far torturing wheels, swift for the end to break or the wheels to break, cried as the tide of the world broke over his sight, will they come? Will they ever come? Even as the mixed hooves of the mules, the quivering bellied mules, and the rushing wheels all mixed with his tortured upturned sight. So we crashed round the bend. We heard his weak scream. We heard his very last sound. Our wheels grazed his dead face. Thank you. So, that's all of today's tour. But, uh, uh, Please say something, Marley. This was amazing, Yan. It was somewhat hard to read some of those beautiful poetic words that are so intense, realizing where they came from, and also being in this environment where we're in it together, remembering those. Well done. Mm. So, uh, so thank you today. And I, I'm, I was kind of interested in the poppies. They kept coming uh, up and they're, they were around a lot. I know they have some symbolism from the war. I see the poppies. Oh, you can uh, touch, uh, touch and accept and wear. Oh, yes. I thought there was a poppy. I can wear one. Okay. So, maybe recent. Let's see if it came up in my inventory. Uh, Poppy, hey, Remembrance Day. I'll wear one, okay? And, okay, I'm wearing a poppy mm. <laughs> as a remembrance of this uh, so poetry no, archive. No, weather is winter, so I remind Ukraine. Maybe very cold. Yes. And, and all are frozen. This is the end of today. Thank you very much. Right. I will see you next time. Next wonderful, time. Ah. wonderful job. This place is amazing.